Welcome back everyone. This is a sequel to the last video that I made on how to make the best ever donuts. So using the same recipe that I already gave you on that video, we're going to be making some more delicious sweet dough creations. I love this recipe because you can make so many different things with it. So there's Boston cream donuts, sticky cinnamon rolls, or you might also know them as Chelsea buns and even basic dinner rolls. Basic recipe, but I have a different video to show you how to finish these pull-apart cloverleaf buns. So one of the reasons for this video is to show you how to make Boston cream so that you can make Boston cream donuts. That takes it to a whole new level. But I also show you how to do cinnamon rolls or sticky buns with the same recipe. All right, so let's start by doing the Boston cream filling. So this starts out with a medium-sized saucepan. And it's pretty simple to make, so pay attention and it'll be done in no time. You do have to make this up ahead though. Start by pouring two cups of milk into a medium sized saucepan. Add one cup of white sugar. Turn your heat on medium high. Then separate an egg because you only need the egg yolk. Add two tablespoons of cornstarch to a measuring cup and mix it with a little bit of cold water, just enough to dissolve the cornstarch. You're making a little bit of a slurry here so that you can thicken your Boston cream. Now, back to the milk that's starting to heat up on the stove. Make sure to stir it and put it in a pan that has a really nice solid bottom to it so that it doesn't stick to the bottom on you. Once the milk just starts to get a little warm, then you mix some of the milk in with the egg yolk. Starting with your egg at room temperature would really help, but Doing this will warm the egg up a little bit so that you can add it to the milk mixture and mix it in without any lumps. Continue to mix this in rather briskly and sometimes at this point I use a whisk. Once I notice a little bit of steam coming off the milk mixture I start to add the slurry so that we can thicken this up. Continue to whisk or stir it while it thickens. Be patient because it may take a few minutes. And I did add the slurry in a couple of increments. And I did that so that I could avoid lumps and I continue to stir it make sure it gets mixed in properly. And note that once it starts to steam pretty good like this it will thicken fairly quickly at this point. So to further avoid any lumps or it thickening too quickly I will turn the heat down a little bit or even remove the pot from the heat source altogether. Then add a nice lump of butter about a tablespoon. Then stir that butter in until it's melted. And finally, add one teaspoon of pure vanilla. And once you've got that all mixed in, go ahead and put that into a small bowl. Set that aside until it cools down a little bit. And you can see the texture of it here. And as it cools, it thickens even more. Cover this with some plastic wrap and place it in the refrigerator to cool completely. When making Boston cream donuts, cut them in rounds about three inches across and fry them like I explained in the previous video until they're golden brown. And there's no donut hole in these because we're going to stuff them with the Boston cream. Let your donuts cool down completely and also with the Boston cream it needs to be cooled down completely and set well. Then you go ahead and spoon it into a piping bag and I have a nice large one for this. You can do this by yourself but it is nice to have a hand at this point. So today I have my daughter helping me. She's holding the donut and making the slit in the donut and opening it up so that we can fill it with Boston cream. Now you can use a knitting needle to open the hole or there's different ways of doing that. So whatever works for you. We used a knife today just to put a little slit in it. Now to make a bit of a chocolate ganache over the top, go ahead and add about half a cup of chocolate chips, oh maybe a couple of teaspoons of milk, and then microwave it on high until that melts. And I do it in about 30 second intervals. Meanwhile, place some icing sugar in a Ziploc bag and coat the outside of the donut really generously. And because you have the Boston cream kind of hanging out the end of this donut, it can be a little messy, but don't worry about the mess. You will certainly need to wash your hands after, but hey, it's well worth it. Or you can go ahead and wear gloves at this point too. So the chocolate ganache looks a little bit thick still, so I'm going to add another two or three teaspoons of milk. So just keep adding whatever milk you need to thin it out a little bit. Have your milk at room temperature if you can, because it'll cool it down too much and thicken it more than thin it for you. So that's another little tip to keep in mind. 
This is so much fun and these are so good and well worth the time it takes to make them. So I hope you do try these. Spoon some chocolate ganache over the top of each of them and let it run down over the sides if you want. And it doesn't have to be perfect unless you're one of those people who just want to put a little blob on the top and you don't want it running over the edges. I mean, you can do that too, whatever works. And said that, you need to spread the ganache out a little bit so that it's not too thick in one spot. And you do need to work rather quickly with this because the ganache does thicken up a little bit on you too as it cools down, which will actually make it a little harder to work with. And it's a good idea to work in small batches with the ganache. So if you have a lot of donuts to do, just do small batches in the microwave and keep heating more up. And this is a little glimpse of what it looks like if you cut into it. Using the same sweet dough recipe, we can make these as well. So let me show you how it's done. Roll your dough to about a quarter to a half inch thick. And roll it into a bit of a rectangle. Slather the surface of the dough generously with some butter or biso margarine. Then coat the top with some brown sugar and just enough to cover it generously. I go ahead and pat it down a little bit just so that it sticks to the butter and it makes it stay in place when you go to roll it. Next, we'll place a generous amount of cinnamon sprinkled over the top. We'll leave this sit for a little bit while we go over to the stove and we'll start to make a little bit of a caramel sauce that will go in the bottom of the pan. So it's roughly equal parts of butter and equal parts of brown sugar. You melt that in the saucepan and if you think you need a little bit more of one or the other you can certainly add it till you get the right consistency. Then I just pour it in the bottom of my cake pan and make sure that it spreads out evenly. Once these sticky buns are done this will actually be the top part of it. So it's up to you whether you like raisins or walnuts. I did a little bit of both, one on one side and one on the other, just because of taste preferences. You can do both all the way throughout it if you wanted to. You could simply do it with just the caramel sauce. So it's time to get the dough ready to go into this pan. Now roll the dough jelly roll fashion, widthwise, leaving the length of the dough to the right and left of you. You can simply use a sharp knife to cut these, or if you really want crisp lines, then you go ahead and use some thread and I'll show you how that's done. I cut each one about an inch and a half wide. That gives room for them to rise. You don't want them too thick through so that they'll cook through easier and they won't have to be in the oven as long and they'll come out of the oven with a nice fresh texture. There you go, kind of nifty, eh? Then you place them into the pan on top of the caramel topping and be sure to place them with the open sides down. And then pat them down a little bit so that they gently touch each other. Now let them rise with a warm towel over them for about an hour to an hour and a half. Depends on when they are doubled in size. Place them in a preheated 350 degree oven. Keep a close eye on them while they're baking. There you have it, they're done, and the time it takes for them to brown up will vary depending on your oven. While they're still hot, turn them over onto some parchment paper. I have that on a cookie sheet, and so I just turn them out onto that. Then I take a spoon and make sure I collect all the extra caramel sauce that was left behind, and just place that on the top of the buns, wherever there seems to be a vacant spot, and make sure that I make use of it all. Once again, another delicious choice. So this is one of my very favorite recipes, this sweet dough, because you can make so many different things starting with the same dough. And you can take one batch of it and split it up and make several things all at once. And like I said, these clover leaf pull apart buns are also made by the same sweet dough. And I have another video that shows how to finish those. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Best Recipes with Sharon. Please give this video a thumbs up and comment in the comment section. And thanks for subscribing. And until next time, happy eating.